Welcome back to The Long and the Short, presented by TradeStation. TradeStation is a leading fintech company and online broker providing an award-winning trading and investing experience with the support, education, and tools to help you navigate the markets. Well, tech IPO activity has increased, but should we expect to see a boom here in 2018? Some of the most anticipated companies have yet to even announce plans to go public. Those are Airbnb, Uber, or even Slack. However, within less than two weeks of each other, Spotify and Dropbox both filed to go public. So what does the future hold? Joining us now is Daniel Ives, Chief Strategy Officer at GBH Insights, and Melissa Armo, owner of the stock swoosh. It's great to see both of you this morning. Melissa, we're going to go ahead and start with you. Spotify last week said that it's opting for a direct listing. We knew that ahead of time, but they actually filed the paperwork just last week. So do you think this is actually going to set a new standard for how tech companies are looking to float public shares, but uh, an IPO alternative? Well, I think it's going to it's going to be interesting to see how they fare with it because if you look at certain companies that did do the IPOs, if they weren't priced right, then they had those huge spike ups or they fell immediately and then it took them several years to turn around and rally. Like Snap came out 2017, that still hasn't really turned around. That stock is still in a downtrend. So I think this is kind of going to be interesting because it's very rare. It's very rare that you see a company do it this way. In fact, I can't even think of a time that I've ever even traded one like this. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's going to be experimental. We'll see how it turns out. It could turn out being good for them. But the problem is you, when you have an IPO, they're in it. And usually you have people been sticking it out. With this kind of thing, they can sell it, they can buy it, they can dump it. If there's no, there's no, what's the motivation, I guess, to hold it for a long term. It could have a huge spike up, drop off, and then may take even longer to recover than, than because of Twitter. Twitter hasn't recovered at all, actually, since it first came out. That had the big spike fell. Twitter's still in a downtrend. Facebook turned around in a very short period of time concerning what happened to them with the IPO. But I think this is going to be an interesting experiment. I'm not sure how it's going to work out. It's rare that it happens, and it might have a spike drop and then take even longer to recover. Yeah, a lot of people, I think, focused on that volatility that could come. Of course, the company even saying in its filing that it could be a very volatile situation. And I do believe that every shareholder or investor is able to sell except for $0.10. Cents. So something that, in terms of the trading aspect, that a lot of people will be looking at. Daniel, we want to bring you in here as well. Of course, the path to profitability and the actual profitability of these companies is so important and increasingly important, we should say, here with these IPOs. Spotify, not yet profitable. What is its path to profitability that you see? How close is it? Yeah, I mean, look, the nature of that model, it's definitely an uphill battle when it comes to profitability. I mean, look, five, uh, five billion you know, in terms of revenue. I think the big thing here is about paid user growth. I mean, 70 million from 48 a year ago. I do think there's a path to profitability, but look, they're in a battle versus Apple, Pandora, a bunch of others. So I do think this is near-term an investment model, which speaks to why I think it is a volatile situation in terms of how it's going to trade. And I think a lot of unicorns are watching this to, to ultimately see how it plays out. But I do think from a growth perspective, they've definitely gotten through you know, some significant hurdles. But I mean, you, you, you've seen it with a billion dollar loss. This continues to be an uphill battle in terms of the profitability profile of just this business model. Right, well, Melissa, let's bring, let's bring you in here. What, is, what does Spotify have to do to avoid becoming another Pandora? Pandora has yet to turn a profit, and it's actually an annual profit, I should say, and it's been public for years. Pandora, I love Pandora, but you know what? I don't pay for Pandora. I get it for free. I just listen to the commercials. That's the problem. The, Spotify needs a niche in order to make money besides the subscriptions, and also they have to get you to want to pay for the subscriptions. And I think the problem with Spotify is you have the Apple. You have the Apple streaming now as well, and you pay for Apple, but everybody's got an Apple phone, and now, now Spotify, and I think it was last year, now they have to pay 30% of the subscriptions through the iPhone, they've got to pay to Apple. That was a little bit of a monopoly there, but they ended up having to pay it and raise the prices. So Spotify has to set themselves apart as some kind of unique thing that young people, millennials, such the go-to for music. I don't, I don't know how to do that. I mean, but Spotify's got to find a way to do it and to get off of people wanting to go to Apple. Because if you're looking to compete with Apple, I mean, you're competing with one of the most successful companies in the world. And you know, like you said, Spotify's showing a loss, and they're going to come out with this direct listing. I don't know how it's going to go. But the one thing I will say that's really exciting, as a person watching in, in this age, that there's so many IPOs. I mean, you just named, before we started talking, Uber, all these other ones that have yet to do anything. Like, they keep coming and coming and coming and coming. It makes it really exciting to watch these companies, see who thrives, see who succeeds, see who fails. 
You know, it's exciting. Pandora hasn't done well. I love Pandora, but it's at four dollars a share. A lot in the pipeline, of course, we've got to wait to see whether or not it comes to fruition and whether or not some of these private companies where it is easy to raise money in the private markets actually do want to come public. Daniel, let's bring you in as well here. Of course, Dropbox, another highly anticipated tech IPO, certainly a unicorn. We know that the company has 11 million paying users, but 500 million registered users do use its cloud service for free. How do you think Dropbox could successfully convert those customers, those 500 million, into paying full-time customers? Yeah, I mean, look, that's the challenge for them. A competitive space when you look at the cloud market. I mean, look, Dropbox has done a commendable job over the last few years. But, you know, you're seeing pricing continue to fall there. And I think for them it's going to be the monetization capabilities in terms of that conversion. And I think investors will have a a bit of confidence here as they've shown it. It's really about a conversion monetization model. I think they've put a pretty good iron fence around their core customer base. Uh, you know, if you go back a few years ago, I think a lot were sort of worried that this model couldn't really succeed. But now it's really about monetization growth and that kind of profitability profile ramping into 2018, 2019. Well, I want to get both your takes on this. Daniel, let's stick with you for first. Uh, Pandora, uh, Dropbox rather, actually filed at a time where its biggest competitor, Box, was at an all-time high, but then uh, Box just reported worse than expected earnings, and at one point last week dropped over 13%. How does this fare uh, for Dropbox? Yeah, I think that's more of a speed bump for Box. So I don't think investors are going to look too much into that. I think if anything, it's a positive for 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 Dropbox. And but ultimately, look if you look at Box and over the last few years, I mean, they've also you got to give them. Uh, you know, definitely been a feather in the cap for those guys in terms of what they've been able to perform. I think net net, you know, there's more of a long term story for Dropbox the next three years. I think investors are going to see forest through the trees, and I think ultimately it's a more positive environment for Dropbox as there's more of that sort of appetite for an enterprise play in this space. Melissa, we only have a short bit of time here, but of course, Dropbox expected to IPO, Spotify expected to IPO. Do you think one, how one offering goes will affect the other? I don't think either one's going to have anything to do with the other one. I would say if you'd be more interested which one to watch, I'd say Spotify looks more interesting just the way they're opening it, just because I think it has more potential than Dropbox. Dropbox has to compete with Box and other software storage units. And I think, again, it goes to you've got to get revenue coming in for the company to have profits, which is what? Subscriptions for both those services or advertising dollars. And the big money really does come from the advertising dollars, too. And you've got to pull in that advertising res revenue. And what's the why would you want to advertise on Dropbox? So these are the things, again, the companies have to innovate and find ways to get revenue coming in the door. Or I'd see a drop box could look like box. I'm looking at the box chart right now that came out in 2015. It had a huge, terrible gap down mm -hmm. just a couple days ago. That stock does not look good. It's under the original mm -hmm. open of the IPO bright price now, three years into it. So 18 something opened at 20 back in 2015. Right. It doesn't look good. Yeah. So I mean, you know, this is one that did make new highs, but then it dropped gap down. And to me, the chart looks lower. And that's not what mm -hmm. you want to see. And so, uh, right. you know, I don't like this we chart right now. We are going to have to leave it there, Melissa and Daniel. Thank you so much to both of you for joining us. That's Daniel Ives, Chief Strategy Officer at GBH Insights, and Melissa Armo, owner of the Stock Swoosh. Always great to see both of you. Thanks so much.